people. How many in the room feel they are dysfunctional in some way and can possibly benefit from therapy? Just a rough show of hands. <laughs> Okay, so we have a third of our audience who are dysfunctional and two-thirds are obviously in denial because <laughs> it was a trick question. There are no normal people. A normal person is simply someone you don't know very well because once you get to know them, you'll realise they're as dysfunctional as you. But the really great news is the more dysfunctional people you know, the more normal you become. In, in other words... If you want to feel more normal than you do right now, just meet more people. You know what I do to meet more people? I dial a telephone number at random every single day. No, it's fantastic. See, we've all got eight numbers. So it doesn't matter where you live. Next time you're at home and you're idle, pick up the phone, punch in any eight numbers. If somebody answers, just say, they'll normally go, hello, and that's when you go, hi, who's that? And they'll go, it's Steve. You go, good to meet you, Steve, and hang up the phone. Now, <laughs> It doesn't give them a chance to say anything, but that's one more person you know. And that makes you just a little bit more normal. The, can I have any more out of this? I can't hear myself at all up here. The one thing, though, that's just a bit better, the one thing, though, that you've got to be careful of, who has a telephone answering machine at home? Okay, who leaves it on even when they're at home sometimes, just so they don't have to talk to anybody else in the human race? Yeah, you cost me 23 cents because... What happens is I ring your number and I get a voicemail. Like the other night I got one that said, Hi, this is Bob. I'm probably in and screening my calls because someone's bound to ring that I don't like. Leave your name and number and if you don't hear from me, it's you. <laughs> Can you believe it? I thought, what are the chances of me ringing somebody I don't know at random and finding they already didn't like me? <laughs> I mean, we were driving home from a party one night and we got pulled up for speeding. I was driving and I'm, you know, I'm sorry I was speeding, but the police officer was at the window and they got the tap and I wound it down. I said, good evening, officer. And he said, sir, are you aware that you were speeding? And I said, no, I'm sorry, I had no idea. And Angie said, yes, you did. <laughs> I said, no, I didn't. And she said, of course you did. I said to you not two minutes ago, slow down, you're doing 80 in a 60. And you said to me, shut your face. <laughs> The policeman looked at her and he said, does he always speak to you like that? She said, only when he's been drinking. <laughs> no idea. She's a fickle girl, beautiful girl though. A woman of many moods. I mean, when we first got married, I bought her a mood ring. Remember the mood rings? You know, I thought it might give me an indication as to how she was at any given moment. And, and it seemed to work. When she was in a good mood, it'd turn green. And when she was in a bad mood, it'd leave a small red mark just on the side of my forehead. <laughs> 